So today we're going to use the Black Scholes model and actually price an actual derivative, namely a European call on an Apple share. But let's review what we have done so far. So this is the important equation we have derived in the last videos. This is the Black Scholes pricing equation. And we used risk neutral pricing and said that the price of any derivative is given by, in the Black Scholes model, is given by the integral of the standard normal distribution multiplied with the derivative function f, which is dependent on the underlying or how the underlying asset evolves. And we want to use this equation to price a call option. And let's think about what a call option is. So a call option gives you the option to buy an asset at the asset price in so at some time in the future, and you have to pay a specified price for this asset, which we call K, and you specify this price before. So we can simplify this a bit and say, okay, if my underlying is greater than this strike price K, then I get the underlying, but I need to pay the price K. And if the underlying is smaller than K, then I do not use my option because I would lose money. So I get nothing. Okay, so this is the formula this is just a simplified version of how, how we can calculate the payoff of a call. And what we're going to do now is we're going to price these parts separately. So first we're going to price the K, then we're going to price the ST. And if we have both prices, well, we can just use the price for ST minus the price for K. And we, are, we have our formula, okay? So let's get into it. What's the price for K or the price for minus k. And for that, we need to first understand what the probability is that my underlying actually is greater at the strike price k at the time that my option is due. So let's try to think about this. We know what the formula is for the for my underlying, right? I've derived this in past videos. My underlying at time t is given by the price of the underlying today times the exponential function to the power of r minus a half sigma squared t minus t plus sigma square root t minus t times y, where y is a standard normal distributed random variable. And we want that this is larger than k. So now I can do some algebra and I'll skip the algebra because it's not that complicated. And we'll get that this holds true, that minus the log of st divided by k plus r minus one half sigma squared t minus t divided by sigma square root t minus t is smaller than y, where y is our standard normal random variable. This, I just rearranged the formula, so it's not that interesting. I just rearranged and took the y to the other side. So let's think about how we can obtain this probability. So we're looking for the probability that this number, which I call for simplicity minus d2, is smaller than a random normal distributed random variable, or in other words, that the standard normal random variable is larger than minus d2. So what does that mean? In the probability density function. I've just drawn the probability density function of a standard normal random variable here and we're looking for the probability that our standard normal random variable is larger than minus d2. In other words, this probability. So what I can do now is I can use the tricks of the normal distribution because the normal distribution is symmetric. This is equal to the probability that the standard normal distribution falls below positive d2. This just comes from the symmetry of the standard normal distribution. And maybe you remember this, it, this, this probability, so that d2 is, that, that the standard normal random variable is smaller than d2, this is just the definition of the cumulative distribution function, right? So in order to obtain this value, we just need to get the cumulative distribution function at the value of d2. So we can simplify this. The probability that my acid is larger than k 
is given by the CDF of the normal distribution function at D2. And D2 is this number here. Okay, so what is the what is our claim to minus k worth? Well, our claim to minus k, or the price of any claim, is given by the risk neutral expectation of the payoff divided by the risk free rate. Right? This is the standard formula for the price of a claim, and we now know that our expectation of the payoff is given by minus k. Well, that's what we get. And the probability that we get minus k is given by n d2. And we need to divide by the risk free rate because we're taking a risk neutral expectation. So that formula is the worth of our claim to minus k. Okay, so we have priced the first part of the call option. Now we need to price the second part of the call option, namely ST. And for this, I once again have the Black-Scholes pricing equation. The price of our call, op the price of any derivative is given by this formula. So let's look at this. So we can copy many of, of the stuff. So we have the risk-free rate times one divided by two pi times our integral. Then we have our derivative function dependent on the underlying. And then we have e to the power minus a half y squared d1. Okay, so now the question is, how do we specify this derivative function on the underlying? Remember, we want to price our claim to st and we will get st if um, st is larger than k. Right, because then we will use our call option. And we said that the probability that st is larger than k is given by the integral of the no standard normal distribution from minus d2 to infinity, right? This is what I've drawn here. This is the probability that our underlying is larger than the strike price. So in order to specify this function of the underlying, what we need to do is we need to take the integral from minus d2 to infinity. And if our standard normal distribution falls into this interval, then we just get the value of the asset. And the value of the asset in the Black-Scholes model is given by this formula, right? r minus a half sigma squared t minus t plus sigma square root t minus t y. Okay, so what I'll now do is I'll simplify. So what I'll do is I have an r here, I have a t minus t here, I have minus r t minus t here, so those cancel out, and I'll bring all on the same exponent. So what I get is one square root two pi, integral minus d2 to infinity, e to the power of minus one half, y minus sigma square root t minus t squared dy. And I've told you that y is a standard normal random variable. So I can use a little trick with um, that works with a normal distribution. I can just um, adapt the limits of the integration. So this is equal. So the integral from minus d2 to infinity of this number is nothing else than the integral of minus d2 minus sigma square root t minus t to infinity of e to the power of minus one half squared dy. This is just a property of the normal distribution. What I've done is I've, I've taken those values out of the exponent and put them into the limit of the integral. Okay. And what do we have now? Well, once again, this is an integral over the normal distribution. And we can calculate this integral just as we did with our k. So this integral is nothing else than the CDF, cumulative distribution function of the normal distribution, which I call n, at 
the place d2 minus sigma square root t minus t. Yeah. And this just comes from the border of the integral. And I've switched the minus for a plus for the same reason I've done in the previous steps, right? Just review what I've done here, what I've explained with the symmetry of the normal distribution function, and then you'll understand and think through it, and then you understand why I removed the minus. And if you have a question, please leave me a comment. And sorry about that. I have, of course, yeah, I've left out the st here. We need to get the value of the asset today in the formula. So cool. So what have we done? We have priced our claim to st. We've priced our claim to minus k. So now what we have to do is we just need to put it together. The price of our call option is given by st n d2 minus sigma square root t minus t minus the, the value of our k, which we have to pay, right? And this is given by, it's given by the risk-free rate. So e to the power of minus r t minus t times k times the normal distribution function, cumulative normal distribution function at the place evaluated at d2. And that's it. That's the price of the call option in the Black-Scholes model. So let's try to just give you, I, I will give you now a concrete example. So let's say we have a call option on the share of Apple. And the value of the share of Apple today is 140 euros. And our call option is due in one year. And so in one year, we have the right to buy the Apple share for 140 euros. And the volatility of Apple is 15% and the risk-free return is 1%. So what's the price of this option? And the price is given by the Black-Scholes formula. So let's just use our formula and plug in the numbers. So what I'll do is the value of the Apple share today times log of st divided by k, 140 divided by 140 is 1, plus 1%, 1 our risk-free rate, plus a half sigma squared, which is 15% squared, times t minus t. But this is 1 because the maturity of our option is 1 year. And then we have the volatility. And then we need to subtract e to the power of 1% times our strike price times the normal the cumulative normal distribution function evaluated at log 1 plus 1% 1 minus a half 15% squared divided by 15%. And I just plug in the numbers, calculate this formula, and what we get is 7 euros and 70 cents, right? So this is an example of how to use the Black-Scholes formula. If you have any more questions on Black-Scholes or if there's something I should go over, please leave me a comment below or please tell me what I can explain better or more detailed and I'll make an additional video on a Black-Scholes model.